One of the people that has inspired me the most with my trading over the years is Jim Simons. He's the founder of Renaissance Technologies and one of the pioneers for quantitative investing. Now, not only is he one of the richest men in the world, but he's also an award-winning mathematician and arguably the most successful hedge fund manager of all time. This is thanks to Renaissance Technologies flagship fund, the Medallion Fund, which has achieved astronomical returns consistently for many, many years. But unfortunately, not much is known about that fund because for quite a few years now, it's been closed to outside investors and that whole company is very secretive. In fact, Simons himself is very secretive as well. So unlike many other famous investors and traders, he's not out there giving talks and interviews every other week. Actually, if you search online, the interviews and talks with him are very rare. So what we've done is we've gone through those talks and interviews and collected up just a series of different lessons that you can take on board from what he's shared. And in particular, what I like about him is his approach to building models focusing on optimization, sticking with a system, and just persisting until you achieve the results that you want. So here are just five lessons from Jim Simons. And if you want the sources from the original interviews and talks, they're all in the description box down below. Enjoy. A business like that is, I'd walk in one day, everything was, going my way, oh, I'm a genius. The next day I'd walk in, everything was against me, oh, I'm a dope. It was a very stomach-wrenching business. Whereas with a system that you can develop, okay, you have a system. You, you do what the computer says to do. You have a, made a historical study of the system that you're using and it worked with a very high probability the system was going to work. And uh, so I, I was much more satisfied with that approach. And, uh, and we hired scientists and so on and to build these systems and improve them. When I started doing trading, I had gotten a little tired of mathematics. I was in my late 30s, I had a little money, I started trading, and it went very well. Uh, I made quite a lot of money uh, with, with pure luck. I mean, I think it was pure luck. It certainly wasn't mathematical modeling. But in looking at the data, after a while, I realized, hey, there's, it looks like there's some structure here. But the, the real thing was to gather a tremendous amount of data, and uh, gradually these models got better and better and better and better. You have to, in a business like this, just keep making things better, keep improving the system, because other parts of it are going to wear out after a while. People will catch on to this or they'll catch on to that. So you, you just have to, like in any business, in any business, you just have to make things better and better and better, because that's what everyone else is trying to do. So. Uh, yes, we were very successful, continue to be, as I say, there are others, uh, but most, very few uh, investment operations are 100%, because this is 100% model driven, it's not 90% or 80%. Some people have models and for, uh, you know, for advice. They say, oh, what does the model say? Oh, yeah, let's go, oh, I don't know, forget that, I, I don't want to pay attention to that. So, uh, but, you know, uh, we, Renaissance is 100% model driven. No trade is ever made because someone walks into the trading room and says, hey, let's buy IBM, um, it's a sure winner, or anything like that. Uh, we, you know, we got too much uh, Google, we got a short, got a, nobody does that. It may be that we had too much Google, but nonetheless, uh, he might have been right. But uh, it's just what the model says. And that religious sticking to the model is the only way you can run such a business because you cannot simulate that guy who walked in and said, hey, let's, uh, Google's too high, let's sell it. How can you simulate that? You don't know what might have happened. But you can simulate, a, you can 
come up with a model or a new predictor, and you can simulate it in the past and see how did it do. So uh, you have to stick to it. Okay, I'll tell you a funny story. Uh, we had a uh, we have a, a Renaissance a, a colloquium uh, every week. Someone comes and gives a talk. The scientist. And, and it's open to the public. And uh, one day an astronomer, a young astronomer came in, a friend of his already worked at Renaissance, and, and this guy came and he, and he gave a very good talk. He gave a very good talk. And I took him aside afterwards and says, you know, your friend is here and uh, you would like working here. You would like working here. We would like to have you work here. And he said, well, it sounds very appealing, but I'm, right now I'm in a project, that I, a science project, that I really want to complete before I think about doing anything else. So he won the Nobel Prize. <laughs> he won the Nobel Prize. He was one of the two teams that learned that the universe, instead of decelerating, was actually accelerating. And it was, it was big news. And so, I think he made the right decision, I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Most people would but that's the rather have a Nobel Prize. So, uh, so he's the only scientist of Nobel Prize quality that we almost got. And, and, and I don't think anyone else in the firm is probably uh, that good. Although some of them have been terrific. I, I, uh, some of them, I don't know, they don't give Nobel Prizes in mathematics. But, um, but they do in physics, of course, and we have a lot of people who are physicists. Experimental physicists do well, astronomers do well. Uh, they look at a lot of data and analyze it, and that's, and that's what we do, yeah. is analyze data. We just hired smart people. My, my, my algorithm has always been, you get smart people together, uh, you give them a lot of freedom, create an atmosphere where everyone talks to everyone else. They're not hiding in a corner with their own little thing. They talk to everybody else. And you provide the best uh, infrastructure, the best computers and so on that people can work with, and make everyone partners. So that was the model that we used in, in, in Renaissance. So we would bring in smart folks, and uh, they didn't know anything about finance. Uh, but they learned. The last, well, the penultimate uh, principle is don't give up. I mean, now, sometimes it is, discretion is the better part of valor, and you can just say the hell with it. But, uh, and go on to something else, and, and that's a decision that we've all made at one time or another. But uh, persistence has a lot of value, and something that's really worthwhile can take a lot of time to come to fruition, and you ought to have patience uh, if you believe in something to, uh, uh, to stick with it. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that, and you found it as fascinating as I do listening to Jim Simon speak. And if you did, then leave me a comment down below, just letting me know which lesson resonated with you the most. And if there are any other lessons you've found from Jim Simons over the years that we didn't include in this video, leave a comment below letting me know what that was. If there are any other people you'd like to see these sorts of videos about, let me know and hit the like button so we know that you enjoyed this one. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care.